Okay, Let's look at a different example. Finding the domain of a function, we ask ourselves what can't happen. So the previous video, we did an example that looked like this, where we said the denominator of a fraction cannot be zero. So we took this off to the side and we said, I'm not allowed to let this be zero. The numerator can be anything, positive, negative, zero, whatever, doesn't matter. But the real value of a function is determined by its denominator. So we have to set this not equal to zero and solve, okay? Radicals are also, or square root symbols like this, are also uh, indicators that the domain is gonna get messed with, right? And we talked about how you can't take the square root of a negative number. The result of this, whatever I plug in here, is going to get plugged in here, right? If I plug, let's just say 10, f of 10. If I put 10 into this function, it's going to say 8 minus 3 times 10. 3 times 10 is 30. 8 minus 30 is negative 22. So we're talking about taking the square root of negative 22, and we can't do that. So this number isn't in the domain of the function. So, and rather than just checking numbers over and over and over again, and say, does 10 work? Does 11 work? Does 12 work? We take this and we say, I know that whatever this ends up being has to be greater than or equal to zero. So take everything that is under the radical and say, take it off to the side, set up a different inequality and say, this has to be greater than or equal to zero, and then go about solving for x, right? So we subtract x from both sides. When we get rid of this x, there's a negative 3x here. So we have negative 3x is greater than negative 8. Then we'd have to divide by negative 3. And let's see if we remember what happens in an inequality when we divide by a negative number. What do we have to do, right? We have to put that sign. So the domain here would be all values of x that are less than or equal to 8 thirds, right? That's kind of a, an odd number. All right, but that's what we get when we set up that inequality and solve it. Let's take a look at the graph, okay? So what do we see? Eight thirds, all right, for the sake of those of you that don't want to get the calculator out, is approximately 2.7, right? It's 2.6 repeating. And what do you notice about this graph, right? It stops right here. There's nothing else. This point right here is, I think we could all agree, in the neighborhood of 2.7. And what is being graphed? What's in green? Everything that's in green, any point that's here on this graph has an X coordinate. Okay, it's not gonna line up perfectly, but you get the idea. All of these points have X coordinates that are less than 2.7. So that's how we can see the domain on the graph. This is how we establish the domain. We call this algebraically. So if you look at, if you look at the, uh, that might even, have, be spelled right, but this is math, not English, so that's okay. Uh, this we would say is determining the domain algebraically. This we can look at graphically. So when you look at the lesson objectives and it says, find the domain of a function algebraically, this is what we're talking about, right? Setting up these inequalities like this, here in this problem, and also in this problem, and solving for the things, for the values that X cannot be, okay? And we'll look at graphically uh, here in another video.